Now, you and I are trapped in time. We cannot go to the right in time. We cannot go to the left in time. We cannot go up in time or down in time. You and I are trapped in what's called linear forward time. We can only go forward. We cannot go back in time. And so you're born, you pay taxes, you watch your country's World Cup team lose, you die. Now, (laughs) you and I cannot go, we can only go forward in time, left, right, up, down, forward. We cannot go back in time. Time is one dimension, and, and yet we can't go back, and so essentially we lose the back time. You and I are trapped in a half dimension of time. Time for us only goes forward in one direction. Now, what if there was a being who wasn't trapped in one dimension of time? What if there was a being who had a two-dimensional awareness of time? What if there was a being who had a three-dimensional awareness of time? Well, you and I have a three-dimensional awareness of space, so what if there was a being who had an awareness of space uh, and time the way that you and I are aware of space? What if there was a being who looked at this marker Let's have this marker represent your life and my life. Born, pay taxes, die. Now here's your life, here's my life. What if there was a being who had a three-dimensional awareness of time? Could they, in looking at our life, do this? Could they do this? Could they do this? Would they say, I have no idea what she's going to do next? No, they'd probably just say, yep. (laughs) They wouldn't be confined in any of the ways you and I are being confined with. They might even use phrases like, in the beginning, you know, before time, to which those trapped in a half dimension would be like, ah, that's not helping. (laughs) At the time of this poem, Genesis emerged among a group of people who lived in a culture in which people assumed that the gods and goddesses are trapped in time just like humans are. So the gods and goddesses are born, uh, they start to get ill, so you build them a giant pyramid, stuff all their stuff into the pyramid, they die, and then their son or daughter comes along and rules, and then the next ruler. And So their understanding was that the gods and goddesses are trapped in a half dimension of time just like we are. It's at this time that God appears to a shepherd named Moses and says, Moses, I want you to liberate my people because God is in the liberation business. And uh, God says to this uh, shepherd, Moses, Moses, I want you to set my people free. And Moses is a very practical man and says, okay, but I'm going to need a name. Can you tell them what your name is? And God says to this man, Moses, well, just tell them my name. Just tell them I am. To which Moses responds, because that pretty much clears it up. (laughs) Yeah. Nothing fuzzy there. Now, uh, wherever you have 10 rabbis, you have 20 opinions on about what the name means. Some say the name means I always have been, I am, I always will be. Others say way too cumbersome. The name is essentially raw essence. I just am pure existence. Some say the name is a way of saying, God saying, I am not trapped in time like all the gods and goddesses that you know of. I stand outside of it simply am, existence in its most pure, primal form. 